this boot camp takes you through several mathematical concepts and techniques that you need in order to do the Introduction to Statistics course. In this module, we'll review permutations and combinations. A permutation is a particular arrangement. For example, if I ask you how many ways can you arrange letters A, B, and C, well, I'm listing all the permutations or arrangements. A, B, C is different from A, C, B, different arrangement. You can also do it as B, A, C, or B, C, A, or C, A, B, or C, B, A. So you really have six ways to arrange the letters A, B, C. If you're using a calculator, it's, you'll see it'll be three permutation three. Okay, now we know three permutation three is six. Well, how do we know that? Okay, first, n is how many uh, objects, in this case letters, how many we have. So the three letters, a, b, and z. Then we have r, which is going to be the number of slots, the three slots. Okay, so let's look at this. We have three letters, a, b, or c. So in the first slot, we have a choice. We put an a, a b, or a c. Suppose in slot one, we used an a. Now in slot two, we have a choice of b or c. Suppose we use the b for slot two. All that's left is c. So there's your first uh, arrangement, a, b, c. If you started with an a, and then in slot two, you put a c, you have nothing left except for a b, which goes to slot three, a, c, b. Suppose you started with a b in slot one. Well, in slot two, you can put an a or a c. Let's see, you started with an a in slot two. b, a. Now all that's left is c. You got b, a, c. If in slot two you put the C after the B, so you have BC, you must have an A that's all that's left, you got BCA. This is called a tree diagram, actually, if you can you know, do it, you'll see. So that's how we know that three permutation three ends up being three factorial. Three times two times one. So three permutation three is three factorial. If you look at your scientific calculator, You'll see an NPR key. P stands for permutations. N is the number of distinct objects. Before we had A, B, and C. So these are the objects you want to arrange. And R is the number of slots or spaces. So the previous example, we had three objects, A, B, C, to arrange in three slots. And that becomes three permutation three, which is three factorial, which is three times two times one, which is six. The general formula for a permutation is n p r is n factorial divided by n minus r factorial. Thus, when n equals r, then n p n is just n factorial. And the way you read a factorial, I'll show it to you, but just let's do it with numbers. 10 factorial is 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, which is more than you can see. It's more than 3 million, it's 3 million 628, uh, 800. So it's a, a large number. 6 factorial is 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 or 720. It's actually surprising how, how large these numbers become. You, know, you try 50 factorial, it's going to be an incredibly large number. Let's look at some problems. How many ways can you assign 5 workers to 5 different tasks? Well, that's 5P5, which is 5 factorial, 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, which is 120. Again, you have a factorial key, so you can just get it directly. 120. How many ways, example 2, how many ways can you arrange 10 different books in your bookcase? And suppose it only has room for 5 books. That's like the slots, spaces. So we have 10 permutation 5. Remember, the second number is the slots. So it's 10 permutation 5. And that turns out to be 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6. The 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 is canceled out by the denominator. But if you just put it in your calculator, you get 30,240. Example, example 3. How many ways can 8 cars line up single file in front of a toll booth? Again, we're assuming there's space for 8. So it's 8, permutation 8, because there are 8 spaces and there are 8 cars, which is 8 factorial, which is 40,320. The fourth example, how many ways can you arrange 12 guests around the table that has 12 chairs? 
Well, the chairs are not like the slots, so the spaces. So N is 12, the 12 guests. You want to put them around the table that has 12 chairs. That's 12 permutation 12, which is 12 factorial. And look at the incredible number that is, 479,600,000. Uh, and now you can see why so many family feuds occur when it comes to seating family members at weddings or bar mitzvahs or whatever uh, family event you have. So many ways to arrange them. And if, if your family's like my family, somebody's always going to say, why did you seat me next to Jane? You know I haven't talked to her in seven years. Or why did you seat my daughter next to uh, Ellen? You know they don't get along. Things like that. But look how hard it is. <laughs> it is, you know, 12 permutation 12 is, you know, more than 479 million. Well, now we're going to talk about permutations and combinations. With permutations, the arrangement of the items is important. Each unique sequence is another permutation. Thus, ABC is not the same as BCA, which is not the same as CBA. You just change around the arrangement the way it's ordered. And it's a, diff it's a different permutation. So you get a, generally a larger number than you're looking at combinations. With combinations, A, B, C, B, C, A, C, B, A are not counted as three separate arrangements. It's, it's the same combination. You still got A, B, C, B, C. The same three letters are in A, B, C, B, C, A, and C, B, A. So let's see how uh, this works. So for example, if I ask you how many different groups of three can be selected from seven people? Let's call the people A, B, C, D, E, F, G. There are seven people. And now once you select B, D, and E, the, the fact that they can be arranged six different ways, B, D, E, E, D, B, uh, B, E, D, it doesn't matter. It's all irrelevant. It's the same three. So obviously you can get a smaller number. Okay? So that's the difference between a permutation and a combination. Note you have both keys on your, you can do an NPR or NCR on your calculator. This is the formula for combination. N, C, not P, now it's a C. N, C, R is N factorial over R factorial times N minus R factorial. Notice it's almost the same as the permutation formula, except now you're dividing, you're shrinking it, in fact, by dividing it by R factorial. So that's why we see that N, C, R is N, P, R over R factorial. Anyway, you don't have to worry about all this. You have an N, C, R key on your calculator. To solve any combination problem. Make sure you have a calculator that has that key. Okay, so you shouldn't even buy a calculator that doesn't have a NPR and NCR on it. And they're very cheap now. So for example, how many different groups of three can be selected from seven people? Okay, that's really, sampling in general is, is a combination problem. So if you want to get uh, groups of three from seven, again, you don't care how they're ordered. Once you get the three, that's it. Okay, so it's seven combination three which is 7 factorial divided by 3 factorial times 4 factorial. And if you put this into your calculator, you should get 35. How many different hands can one draw from a deck of 52 cards in a game of 7-card rummy? Again, you don't care about how it's ordered. You just want to see how many different decks uh, from a deck of 52, how many... Uh, hands of seven can you get okay that's 52 that's n combination seven that's like your slots 52 combination seven that's 52 factorial over seven factorial times 45 factorial if you do in your calculator you'll find there's 133 million seven hundred eighty four thousand five hundred sixty different hands you can get in seven card rummy let's try the next example how many samples of size 6 can be drawn from a population of size n equals 50? Well, this is simply 50 combination 6, which is 50 factorial over 6 factorial times 44 factorial. Using your calculator, you'll get the answer of 15,890,700. And that's, it's very simple. Once you learn how to use your calculator, you have no problem with The biggest problem you'll have is deciding, is it a permutation or a combination? And that's easy to figure out. Do we care about the arrangement or not? If we don't care about arrangement, and once you have ABC, it's the same as BCAC, then, then you're basically looking at a combination. 
To find more boot camp modules, uh, visit the STAT course at the URL you see there, and um, go to the uh, navigation bar on the left, click boot camp, and you'll see all kinds of things that are uh, good to do prior to the statistics course. Uh, many of you have already done this before and maybe only need a refresher.